Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Hector here from the New Class Rising Podcast. Uh, thanks for watching this video. This is going to be uh, a video that I that am recording for episode 87 of the New Class Rising Podcast. Um, and now that we've talked about some of the software services out there and why you want to use uh, software services for prototyping, mockups, and wireframing in particular when it comes to working on software, uh, I want to talk about UXPIM because it's what I use for my, you know, for my own projects. It's what I'm using right now for a project that I'm working with a potential business partner. And um, I want to kind of give you an inside look of what UXPIN looks like. Uh, you know, right now I'm not an affiliate of UXPIN. I'm simply sharing this video because I think it's so, um, I think UXPIN is great for people who are building software uh, and, and particularly who want to prototype and demo that software for their developers. Uh, maybe in the future I'll become an affiliate. I don't even know if UXPIN has an affiliate program. Um, and if you want to, you know, uh, you know, buy UXPIN via via my affiliate link, then, you know, great. If not, then that's fine too. Um, like I said, there are, there are other uh, software uh, prototyping, uh, you know, wireframing and mock-up services out there. UXPIN isn't the only one, obviously, but, you know, just from my perspective, from the research that I've done, I think UXPIN is by far one of the best. Um, and I'll get into why in just a second. But like I talked about in the... Um, in the podcast, uh, you know, it's going to be important if you're building software, for example, that you do have some kind of mock-up, that you do have some kind of prototype or even wireframe, because not only do you get to use that to uh, perhaps demo it to your potential customer, right? Because when, again, when it comes to building SaaS software, you want to, you know, the goal, I guess, you know, in my opinion, and from, you know, if you, if you follow me and you listen to the New Class Rising podcast often, then you know that you want to, you know, before you actually build the software product, you want to, to sell it, right? You want to be able to have customers before you even build the thing because you want to validate it. You want to validate that there is a need for the software product out in the market. And the best way to do that is to, you know, to, to, to sell it, to actually have customers um, and to garner some of that, uh, you know, some of that, not some of that support, but some of that validation that you'll need in order to build a software product. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be important for you to, to validate that with your customers, but it's also going to be important for you to, to demo that to your developers because, you know, developers are, are not a design team. They're not project managers. They're not in your head. So they don't know what vision it is that you have for, for what it is that you want built, right? There's, they're just programmers or coders. Um, and when you tell them to go to work on something, they're going to go to work with the idea, with an idea of what you might want. Um, and so unless you're able to really prototype this or mock this up for them, they're really going to just be flying blind and they're going to be guessing, um, uh, when it comes to, to building your software product. So it's going to, it's going to be incredibly important from the perspective of the customer, because you're going to be able to, de to, to demo that for them, but you're also going to be able to save tons of time and tons of heartache and stress when it comes to dealing with developers and having them build this product for you. So what you're looking at here is the back end of UX pin. And I want to give you kind of an inside look of a project that I'm working on. I'm calling it educated menu. Oops. Let me uh, click on the, the actual project. I'm calling it Educated Menu, and um, let me go over to Websites. As you can see, UX Pin has different presets. Uh, you know, they 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 have presets for iPhones and iPads. Uh, if you want to build those types of apps, and the great thing is that they're already measured for you when it comes to you know pixel size and screen size. So this is great because you don't even have to worry about you know the uh, the area in which you um you you want to uh when it comes to you know building the software product the area in which you're going to be showing your user interface or your ui it's already pre-measured for you so you don't even have to worry about that which i think is great so you have iphones ipad and websites which is what i'm working on uh, for this particular project and as you can see here this is again this is just a very rough draft of a user interface for the back end of a website that a project that we're working on. So let me kind of just give you some, some brief perspective of what I, what it is that we're working on so that you can, um, gain just an idea or perspective of what this is. Um, so, you know, I had a, I had a potential or I had a, you know, uh, a partner, uh, potential business partner come to me and say, Hey, Hector, 
um, you know, I'm, I, I have a business in which, you know, I work with uh, the public education school system uh, and, and, you know, school districts across the state of Texas that allow me to, you know, go into their schools and display school lunch menus for them. You know, so I go into these schools, I set up, you know, screens in which I can display school lunch menus for students because schools have an incentive to display these school lunch menus and give students all of the options that they'll have available to eat, whether it's breakfast or lunch, but they can't tell them directly, you know, you need to pick this, this, and this because it's against the law. I get, you know, there's, I, I don't know how this is even, I don't even know how this is even possible, but apparently it's against the law for uh, schools to tell students what they have when it comes to options to eat. So they can't tell them directly, hey, you have to pick, you know, a pizza and you have to pick, you know, one of these two vegetables um, and then you have to pick, uh, you know, one of these two, you know, uh, side items over here on this side. But schools have an incentive to do this because they get some kind of reimbursement from the federal government when it comes to school lunch expenses, right? So, you know, schools want to display school lunch menus and I am one of, you know, many people or, or not many people out there who's actually doing this and, you know, I have several contracts today with schools, but, you know, uh, you know, the process right now is not very automated at all. And in fact, you know, one of the scenarios he gave me is, for example, you know, he'll have a, a middle school, let's just say that, you know, on the school lunch menu says that today they're serving pizza, carrots, corn, um, and a brownie with, you know, milk or whatever. And instead of pizza, for example, it turns out they're having hot dogs that day. Well, you know, the way he has this system set up today, the school calls him directly and tells them, tells him, Hey, you know, I just call him bill for purposes of this, <laughs> of this uh, video. And they say, Hey bill, you know, I, um, you know, we're not serving pizza today. We're serving hot dogs instead of pizza. So could you make the changes on the school lunch menu and send us the template back so that we can upload it and uh, display it on these screens? So obviously not very, not very um, automated, right? Not, not automated at all because he has to manually make changes. But not only that, when you have, you know, five or six different schools calling you in one day around the same time, to make these changes, you know, it, it prevents you from really scaling that business, right? And so he came to me and he said, you know, do you have some ideas for how we can automate this? And I said, absolutely. Uh, in fact, it would not be very hard at all. So, uh, so what you're looking at here is a, a very brief uh, and very rough draft, I might add, of a school lunch menu. Um, so let me scroll up here. Let me go to the control panel. Uh, so here you have a control panel. Um, I have several different pages that I've been able to mock up and create simply using some of the tools that are available through UX pin. Um, so I've been able to create these different pages. Um, and the great thing about UX pin that I love is that you can create interactive, uh, demos for how a website should look. And I'm going to give you a demo here very briefly, but you know, you have with with UX pin, you have these libraries of just different, you know, in this case, website UI properties, right? So, you know, right now we're looking at the, you know, at font, uh, for example, font icons, um, you can go back and look at UX pin icon sets, which, you know, just give you different types of icons that you can use for your website. Um, oops, let me go back. Cancel that. Um, let's see here. Um, there was a website section. Here we go. Website UI kit. This is one of the ones that I've been using quite a bit um, for this website. And you can see here you have different boxes, different things you can use. And you can literally just drag and drop these onto your your page, for example, to, you know, and, and, and you know, just put them wherever you want to, um, you know, make your website look a certain way. Right. So you're again, you're you're creating a demo for your developers or your potential customers um, or a mock up. I should say that not, not, not a demo. Uh, so so, you know, you can literally just drag and drop. And the great thing is, is that you can create interactive um, uh, uh, demos. So let me kind of give you an example of that. You know, here you see this little right, uh, this little thunderbolt here. What I did 
is I made this uh, high school button clickable. And you do that by going to this little thunderbolt here and you can say, you know, I want a new interaction. Um, it'll, it'll say, okay, what do you want? What's the trigger? Is it a click, a tap, a swipe, depending on what it is that you're using. In this case, I use click. And the action can be, uh, you know, show, hide something, toggle. Um, usually I use, you know, go to a different page, right? So you go to a different page and then here you can pick whatever page it is that you want um, that action to, to go to and press OK and then it's there, right? So I'm going to give you uh, a quick demo of that here shortly. But, you know, this is a very rough draft of what it is that I'm doing. So let me give you a quick demo again of this um, of this project and again this is great because you can demo this to your potential customers or even again your web developers and this is a very rough draft again but you know I've one of the things that we're doing is you know today when he displays when my partner displays lunch menus he literally has uh, literally has PDF files that he uploads to some kind of computer and he just opens those PDF files up. Well, what, what, what we're trying to do is we're going to create subdomains for every single school. You know, here we're calling the, uh, the website Educated Menu or edumenu.com. This is just an, uh, an example, right? But each school is gonna have their own subdomain within our servers, within our you know, system that they're going to be able to go to at any point in time to just display the, the menus as opposed to having to, um, you know, edit specific files or anything like that, right? But, you know, here, you know, people will have the opportunity to, opportunity to go to a school, to a control panel. This is what the, the schools will see, the school administrators will see, because what we also want to do is we want school administrators to be able to make these edits themselves as opposed to coming to us, because then it becomes very, it's not as scale, scalable as it could be, right? Because you can't have, you know, 300 different school districts across the country coming to you saying, hey, we want you to make these changes for our school at this exact time, right? Um, of course, you can always hire people to, to do that and to offer that service if that's what schools want, if they want you to build the school lunch menus for them once they create them. But, you know, initially you want, at least our goal is initially to have um, each school have their lunch administrator uh, be able to do this seamlessly in the back end of our website. So this is the back end again. Um, and once they come in, they'll create a school lunch menu, you know, going from elementary, middle or high, depending on high school, depending on what they want to create. But if you go to school lunch menu or a school control panel, here you would have a list of all the schools that you're managing, right? So let's say, for example, that you want to go to school, high school one. You click on high school one and um, you go to the to the dashboard for high school one. As you can see, the current active campaign is August and you can see that it's on. If you want to, you know, if you want to turn it off, you can just click on that and it'll turn everything off. The And, and therefore, what you see here is that the school lunch menu is no longer displaying on high school onedumenucom right? That's no longer displaying. If you want to turn it back on, turn click on that, it'll come back on. Now, if you want to look at what school menu is displaying today, again, it's August, so you click on August, and you can look at the actual school menu. Now, this is just a, literally, a JPEG. <laughs> I imported this, um, this picture here from a screenshot that I took online, but the idea is that you know, if they wanted to make changes to their school lunch menu for a specific day, for example, they'd click on, let's just say 21 and uh, click on this here. And that's not working. I want to, I don't know why. Let's see here. Uh, let me go to school menu. Okay. I just need to fix that app, that interaction on that specific page. But what they would do is they'd go to, you know, 21, they type it, you know, here they'd have breakfast. Um, uh, so entree one, side one, side, this would be uh, drink one and dessert one. And for lunch, they'd have the same. Once they have that change in place, all they have to do is click save, go back. It would take them back to the menu. 
and they would have the option to make any changes from here. You know, uh, when it comes to schedules, they, they'll be able to set schedules uh, by clicking on these little buttons on the top. And, um, you know, they'd be able to create menu templates, customize their own templates, because obviously each school has different mascots, right? Different colors, etc. And if you want to look at school menus that you're managing, then you click on school menus here. If you want to create a new menu, you'd click on the create menu button. Um, or if you want to, you know, change user account, etc. So, I mean, this is this is a very, very rough draft of what it looks like on the back end. And again, this is something that you can create using UX Pin and something that you can demo to your potential customers and even your developers. So, all right, rising class, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You know, um, I'm not going to go into some of the uh, specifics when it comes to um, how to how to do all of this stuff here. Oops, excuse me, how to do this stuff here because, um, you know, I'm actually a newbie myself uh, when it comes to using this, this software here. But I, I can tell you that just from the, you know, couple weeks that I've had working on this, um, I, it didn't take me two weeks to build all of this. It literally took me a few days. Um, hours wise, it maybe took me about 12 hours total to create all of this with the learning curve, right? Um, because with with a learning curve you I mean you, you kind of just have to figure out how some of this stuff works um, and all of the options that you have that are available to you but I mean you can create so many pages again just you know and create demos and mock-ups for your customers and your developers and it's great I love this tool and you can use it for widescreen websites iPads and iPhones so again hopefully you enjoyed this video um, leave me a comment on this on the specific uh, blog post I want to know what you thought uh, is UX pin something something that you'd be interested in? Uh, if so, why or why not? All right, take care.